Welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to go over the methodology for determining the elevation of a series of points along a curb line. Now, the situation where this would arise would be if you were calculating stakeout elevations for most commonly a curb like in a parking lot or even along a road. That would be the common occurrence, but the same methodology comes in handy to determine all sorts of stuff. The elevation of a, of a sewer pipe at a, given el at a given location. I've had occasions where they're trying to lay a sewer line, for example, through rocky soil. And they had to get dynamite and blast the soil up in order to kind of blast the trench for the sewer line. But the nature of the business is you don't want to blast out any rock you don't have to because it costs money. So they would have me go along and every so many feet were along where the line was, I would have to calculate the elevation of the line and calculate how deep they had to blast. Uh, but that's just a little sidebar. We're going to use the same methodology to determine the elevation of a curb along uh, in, a, in our hypothetical parking lot. So, remember, like all of these problems, this is made up as I draw it up on the board. This is the first time I've put these numbers on the board, and I'm calculating it live right in front of the camera, so you never know what we're going to come up with. Uh, we may make mistakes and have to back figure it and figure out what we did wrong. So, here we go. Now, in our theoretical parking lot, from one corner of the lot to the other, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to say it's a straight grade. Uh, let's say the elevation at this end is 74.3, and the elevation at this point is 79.7. That's a difference of a little over five feet. And let's say our, our horizontal distance is 117 feet. All right. It's an odd number, so it's going to give us an odd number to work with. Okay, first thing you need to do is determine how much elevation change you got in this 117 feet. So 79.7 minus 74.3 gives us a distance, I believe, of 5.4. So our delta elevation is 5.4 feet. Our horizontal distance, like we wrote up on top, is 117 feet. So, first step, calculate the rate of change. Remember, we're assuming this is a straight grade, that it's a straight line from point to point. There's no swales in it or humps or anything like that. So, that means our rate of change, which I abbreviate as ROC, just to save space, uh, is going to equal the delta elevation over horizontal distance, which is going to be over HD, which is going to equal 5.4 divided by 117 feet. All right, 5.4 feet divided by 117 feet. We'll do a quick calculation. Say 4.61.046. That gives us a rate of change of 0 0.046 feet per foot. That's the rate of change all the way along that curb line. 0 0.046 feet per foot. Now, for the purposes of our example, we got to determine where we want to put these stakes along the curb. You're obviously going to put a, an offset stake at the end of the curb so they know where to build that. But they need to know the elevations along the curb, along the whole, the whole length. Generally speaking, you space those out however, however the contractor or you, if you're the contractor, wants to. So we're going to use a common number, 25 feet. 
All right, so we want stakes every 25 feet, but 25 doesn't go into 117. So we're gonna make it easy on ourselves. We're gonna do a stake every 25 feet, and then we'll just have an oddball distance at the end. So start out with, we're gonna do 25 feet here, 25, 25, 25. Not to scale. You can see just, I'm eyeballing it, so my, uh, my distances are not quite right. Tell you what, let's play with it a little bit, try to do a little bit better than that. Uh, one, two, three, four, one. We'll do one, two, three, four. I'll use my digital dividers there. Uh, anyway, each one of these segments is going to be 25 feet between each point. Now, that's going to obviously add up to 100, and it's going to leave us a 17-foot gap, a 17-foot gap at the end. Okay, now we know our horizontal distance, we know our rate of change, we got everything we need to determine the elevation at each point. So here we go. If our rate of change is 0 0.046 feet, and we're going 25 feet, our delta elevation, we're going to use this same formula, just rearranged, is going to equal HD times rate of change. So it's going to equal 25 times 0 0.046, which is going to be, whip out the calculator, 1.53 feet, 1.53 feet in 25 feet. Well, now all we gotta do is add. We should be able to add, I hope we can add, doing it all in my head, 74.3 plus 1.53 gets us to 75.83. And because we calculated for 25 feet, every 25 foot segment is going to have the same change of elevation. So we're going to go up another 1.53. So I'm going, to, I'm going to wipe out my 117 there to give myself some real estate. 75.83 plus 1.53 gets you to what? 76.83, 77.36. If I did the math right, hey, I'm doing this in my head. I respectfully reserve the right to make a blunder every now and then. 77.36, add 1.53 again, and that gets us up to 78.89. Right? If I did that right. 78.89 plus 1.53 gets us to uh, 79.42, I believe. I haven't used the calculator for these, so we're going to check it and see how we did. We got this far. Now we've got an oddball distance. Now we can do this two different ways. We can either reuse this formula to figure out what the change of elevation should be to get to the end, or we can figure backwards and see if the rate of change we've got left over is still right. And just for a heck of it, we're going to do it both ways. So we're going to check. Draw a little squiggly line here. We're going to check. Check number one. Delta elevation is going to equal 17, because we're only going 17 feet this time. 17 times 0, excuse me, times, excuse my, 0 
do a quick calculation. That gets you to 0.78 feet equals 0 0.78 feet. Seventy nine point four two plus point seven eight is what? Seventy nine point four two. Let me get my calculator here. Gets me to eighty point two zero. Eighty point two zero does not equal seventy nine point seven. So this is good. This is where we were going to work our problem. We know we did something wrong. We're going to back figure it and see what we did wrong. Start at the beginning and work your way through. Duplicate your work. 79.7, 74.3, 5 5.4 is our delta elevation divided by 117. I got 0.46. So I'm good that, that far. That gets me to... Ooh, now I see what I did wrong. That's not 1.53. That should be 1.15, okay? Let me double check my calculations here again. 25.04. Point zero four six times 1.15 problem solved okay I'm gonna bleed on it and get the red pen we're gonna make this 1.15 this is the way it's supposed to work because you do the stuff in your head you write it down but mistakes are made the question is not are you gonna make a mistake the question is do you have a methodology in place a strategy in place to catch the mistake you made before it's a problem here it's not it's just numbers on a board right there's no concrete board there's nothing physical created yeah we took a little time to do it but we caught our mistake that's the important part so I'm just gonna strike a line through these numbers and write some fresh ones up there we've recalculated now and we realize what we did wrong we had this rate of change entirely wrong. It's not 1.53 feet per foot. It's 1.15 feet. Excuse me, not feet per foot. Feet. In 25 feet, we're going up 1.15. Well, the advantage here is it makes the math a little bit easier. So we're going to do it by, by mind again. By, we're, we're just going to do the math in our head. We don't need a calculator to add 1.15 over and over again. So here we go, 74.3 plus 1.15 gets you to 75, 75.45. That's that point right there. We go another 25 feet over, we go up another 1.15 feet. 75.45 plus 1.15 is 76.60. Go over another 25 feet. We go up another 1.5. 76.6 plus 1.15 gets you to 77.75. Another 25 feet. Up another 115. 77.75 and 115 gets you to 78.90. Now, this check doesn't matter. We're going to wipe that off. I'm going to grab my eraser and just reclaim the real estate here because we don't have that much space to work with. We are going to check right here. We have two different ways of doing this. We can either just run the next distance and see if our elevation matches, or we can determine the rate of change for that little gap there and see if that matches what we think it should be. So, okay, just for a heck of a, we're going to do it both ways. That way you can see both ways to do it. Okay, 
what we basically need to redo is just do this calculation again, but this time for 17 feet instead of 25. So our delta elevation is going to equal 17 times 0 0.046. Get out the old calculator here. I am not too proud to do that. That gets me to 0 0.78. Our delta elevation should equal 0 0.78. Okay, we're going from 78.9 plus 0.78 gets you to 79.68, right? That's close enough to, to, to 79.68. 6.8, That is not perfect. And the reason it's not perfect is we got a little bit of rounding error in here. The reality is it's not 0 0.046. It's 0 0.046 with some small number. But we're talking about two hundredths of a foot, which to use numbers that may be more familiar with you, that's basically a quarter of an inch, right? A quarter of an inch in 17 feet on a concrete curb in a parking lot is not something anybody's going to notice. It's not something that's going to make a difference except in a very, very rare situation. So this is a perfect example of good enough for what it's for. You want to be anal about it, you can raise each one of these just a fraction. But getting back to our check. We're going to rework it the other way. Let's check our rate of change. We have a rate of change. Let's calculate it for our little segment there at the end. ROC is going to equal delta elevation. We go from 78.9 to 79.7. That's point, what is it, uh, 0 0.8 feet, 0 0.8 divided by 17. Get out the old calculator here. Four point. Is zero point zero four seven feet per foot. That and that are almost identical and close enough. Well, there is a perfect example of calculating elevations along a curb or along a pipe, along any one of a number of things that you're going to confront serving in the field. And uh, I hope that I was able to help you gain some knowledge. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add them at the bottom of the video. I'm always looking for feedback from the YouTube audience. If you have any requests for other videos, put them in the comments, see if I can help. Anyway, thank you. I hope you all have a good evening and stay safe.